Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are we doing today, Kyle? Doing right, Jer. Doing all right. How are you doing today? I have no complaints. Um, it is uh, week eight, or excuse me, nine, the end of week nine. Um, eight, nine, nine, eight, whatever. Ohio State uh, pulls out a victory over uh, Penn State, over the uh, Nittany Lions. Wasn't always pretty, but it ended, it ended decisively enough. Um, this will probably be one of our more interesting when once we actually get to the grades, once we actually do the grades. I feel like this might be one of our more interesting grade sessions. Because I've seen a lot of discourse online that I wholly disagree with. I've also seen some discourse online that I wholly do agree with. So it'll, I think it'll be interesting to see how we grade stuff out. Uh, but before we get before we grade stuff out, let's just, let's just go over the game a bit. Um, Ohio State. Uh, OK, let me say it this way. If you listen to know your enemy and I beg that you do, if you listen to Kyle and I on Thursday on know your enemy, we told you this was not going to be an easy football game. We told you that Penn State has the best secondary in the country. Period. They have three guys on that in that defensive secondary who are bona fide NFL stars. That is a big boy NFL secondary. But Jared. yes, gangland. No, there's no but. There is a but, Jared. There is a but. There's a I, couple of butts in there. There's a couple of butts, Jared. If you were when, waiting for the but, there was no but. One, Jared, if we looked at our uh at our game predictions, uh, not not quite not quite to what we sure. thought it was going to be. We we thought we thought Ohio State had been able to roll a little bit more over over Penn State. I, I thought uh, I, I thought Jared, that the second half was going to be a little more uh, one-sided. I thought this the first half played out pretty much how I expected it to. I expected Ohio State to put up more in the second half. Yeah, you had fifty-two to seventeen. I had fifty-five to twenty, and our guest picker uh, was just was really close there. He had yeah. um, Austin 45-24. So, uh, which he would have been close. literally one point off if not for the junk Penn State touchdown at the end, which um, he was not happy about. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, back back to this game here. Yep, Ohio State twenty. Excuse me, forty four. Penn State thirty one. Definitely a wider margin victory for Ohio State compared to other years. Ohio State has played Penn State here, and you look at the stats here, Jared. It's it was a dogfight. It was a dogfight for three and a half quarters for Ohio State. So I'm and not. So Good. I was going to say, and like you look at the stats here, like almost almost every stat really favored Penn State here, other than the probably the well, two important stats. One, the final scoreboard, but more but the other important thing the turnovers four turnovers yeah. to none that's that's that was yeah. the key difference in this game 100 percent. that that's it is so hard to win a football game minus four in turnovers it's it's actually nearly statistically impossible i don't know what the numbers are in college uh but in the NFL, if you're minus four in turnover, I think it's something crazy like you lose 90 percent of the time. Um, I, I, I don't know how well that translates to college football, but yeah, JT won that one. Yeah, uh, I think that's at least somewhat fair to say. Uh, people Thanks were complaining me, uh, about me of a game that uh, Chase Young had a number of years ago against Penn State. Very similar. Or Joey Bosa. Or Joey Bosa. There's a yeah. long history of defensive ends like shining against Penn State. Uh yeah, go check out uh Tony Gerdeman's uh article over at Buckeye Huddle. He 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 talks oh, just, did he? talks about that. Yep. I I don't between the game ending and us recording, 
I, I try not to read anything opinion based because Lord knows I've like read or listened to Tony before we recorded. Then I find myself just regurgitating what Tony said, and I don't want to do that. Well, I, um, I saw him. I saw him post that, and I'm like, you know, I it's exactly my mind mind thought there, and that's the only reason I went ahead and read it before we um before we hit the record button, Jared, because it was pretty much exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, can we get some more of this? Uh, Tony emotes in the chat that would be appreciated. Um, yeah, man, the, this was, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh uh, no, I was just saying that I'm not at all surprised that Ohio State's offense struggled to throw the ball. Um, that you know, especially through the first half, it was a bit of a struggle. Not at all surprised by that. Okay, um, struggling throwing the ball, I, I would disagree with that statement because through the first half, time, I said there was a time like he was like twenty one through the first half. I said point. Hmm? through the first half. I said, yeah, I don't think he, I don't think he had that bad of a first half. Let me let me go. I'm not specific. Stats. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're I'm saying Ohio State struggled to throw the ball, and you interpreted that as C.J. Stroud had a bad first half. That is not what I said. Okay. Uh, the struggling in the passing game to me largely was the fault of the coaches. I, if I never see Ohio State run another bubble screen in my life, I will, I will die a happy man. We didn't struggle to throw, uh, Gangland says, we didn't struggle to throw. We struggled with the play call. 100%. If I never see another bubble, guys, throw a bubble screen. Ah, it didn't work. Throw a bubble screen. Ah, it didn't work. Then, okay. Okay. Throw a bubble screen. Didn't work. Okay, guys, like, let's, that's three in a row with like zero results three in a row zero results let's not try and oh they just tried another one seriously through 10 in a row i don't think it was in a row zach but they threw like 10 bubble screens and i think only like two or three might have gotten more than three yards yeah, it, Spikes points out they tried fake bubble screens that didn't work, then went back to the bubble screen. Yeah, I feel like a large part of that bubble screen is just to set up the set up a big play, but then the big play didn't take. And yeah, um, I mean, so I did, I'm not saying C.J. Stroud struggled. I'm saying the play callers struggled. Yeah, there there are two things on the offensive. Um, play calling that really frustrated me. And I wish that the high state coaches uh, fixed that a lot sooner than uh, midway through the third quarter. <laughs> uh, and that was the bubble screens. But, and also I almost shit myself it, when it, they threw another bubble screen in the third quarter. Like what are halftime adjustments for? If it's not for, Hey guys, let's stop calling the, the bubble screen. And the other thing was the, um, Oh, I forget the exact terminology. It's skipping my head, but pretty much the um, um, run play. It's the it's a stretch plays. It was those stretch run plays because the Penn State defensive tackles were slanting and getting in there, created and the offensive linemen just could not block at all. And, it, and then if they tried to block them when they're slanting in, the linebackers just filled in and wide open to right to the running back. And it was very frustrating that that part didn't get changed too. Spike says they slanted the correct way. Every time that needs to be analyzed. What, why are, why are the directions of the runs being, you know, they figured something out. Ohio state has some sort of tell Penn state knew where the, where the run was going every time they're going to need to figure that out. Gangland says Jones and Whippler need to block their assignments better. Uh, they they struggled again um, when when it's a bigger. Bit, when it's a bigger defensive tackle, they are they're struggling. They're going to need to figure that out. Uh, we did see Ohio State 
as Kyle was saying with the stretch plays, we saw Ohio State try some zone based blocking. And oh my God, that turned Travion into last year's Travion Henderson again, which, oh and, and it, I think one of the reasons why we've seen Mayan Williams be a little bit better this year and Henderson not play so well this year might have to do with the, with the sort of man on man blocking versus the zone blocking. And maybe that's a thing that Ohio State uses a bit more, especially in mine. Williams says mine. Williams is OK. Take that for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. All right. But if he's not. And especially, you know, and got Northwestern next week and maybe mine's feeling a little banged up. Maybe it's a maybe it's a maybe it's a game where you just you, you let Henderson go. Well, maybe it's a game where you uh, build out that zone blocking scheme a little bit more, too. Yep. Blocking no, needs to be better, but also Trey needs to stop chopping his feet in the backfield and just go north south. Um, <laughs> It's hard to tell him to stop chopping his feet in the backfield when the defensive tackle is also in the backfield. Which I think is what we've seen the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um. And furthermore, I think he just runs better in a zone block scheme because the zone block scheme is basically like a cut and go, which I think is what he is made for. Yeah. Um, would be exactly. better off not slipping out of cuts. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Um, he he does slip a lot. That's a, that's a thing that I don't know if he's around the right spikes. I don't know if it's a... It's this is two games in a row now that Ohio State has not rushed for more than 100 yards in a yeah. game here. That's a problem. They, they're going to need to figure it out. And again, they're going to need to do some self-scouting and figure out how, why uh, Penn State was able to decipher the directions of their runs so often. Agreed, but he's always looking for a hole and needs to realize the hole won't always be there, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, but again, he seems to be finding that hole. It seems to fit his run style better in the zone block scheme for whatever reason. And I don't know what that reason is exactly, but the second they switched to zone blocking, we saw Henderson 2021 on the field again. I again, if if mine Williams isn't playing next week against Northwestern, then that's a thing that they're going to have to take into serious consideration. Uh, the zone scheme gives him more uh, control to set up the lanes versus hopping um, instead of hoping the intended hole is open. I agree. I, I think he is a one cut and go runner and a single cut and go runner will thrive better in a zone blocking scheme. I, I, I've, I, for whatever reason, um, uh, and then I lost it. Oh, uh, uh, God. It was a Denver running back who was insane during the, the aughts, whose name I've lost. Um, Terrell Davis. Thank, oh God, I love having, this is why I love having chat here. <laughs> Terrell, yeah that's what i'm saying he's kind of i'm not saying that that's necessarily a good comp for trey um but i'm just saying that's an example of a single cut runner thriving in a zone blocking scheme you don't know that name before, that's before because we, you're a child gangland that's because you're a child we, before we start grading here the other thing that ohio state really needs to work on and it's been Again, here we go. Another trend here. Uh, third down efficiency, 4 for 12 in this game. Penn State ended up going 6 for 16 in this game. But, I mean, to credit for Penn State, a lot of those third downs was like third and eight, third and 10 early on. And it's hard, it's hard converting those third downs, too. So definitely some Ohio State really needs to, to work on uh, – as the as you get some games that's 
very winnable. <laughs> I'll, this I'll this sounds way. like an insanely obvious thing to say, but I feel like Ohio State's at their best when they aren't even paying attention to the yard markers. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, in all honesty, like the Ohio State's at their best when they're just chunking plays 10 yards or more at a time. All right. Gets into the grades, he says. Um, make me. Well, Actually, I no, it, it is probably... I don't know. Is it, is it time? Henderson 16. By the way, Henderson still ends the game. And of course, like two long chunk plays at the end um, help this, but he still ends the game with near five yard average. It makes the end results look good. Yeah. All right. Great. Mar- hold on. Marvin Harrison, Jr. 12 well, recep- we to- 10 receptions, 185 yards. And for anyone doing math out there, that's an 18.5 uh, average. Didn't get a tutty, though. No touchdown. Uh, yeah, a little surprising. Yeah. Also, uh, uh, as the Sloopcast producer, it is time. Listen, don't don't get too high on yourself, Austin. Come on, man. A little, a little bit. Just a little bit of uh, modesty, would you please? <laughs> let's I, I agree with austin here let's 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 jump into it here though all right needed reading into, all these stroud had a the, bad game the man did everything he could yeah anyone look i'm just gonna say this i'm gonna say this bluntly some fans are stupid and if the game is good then the quarterback was good if the game was bad then the quarterback was bad you, you literally have people who still blame him for losing to Michigan and couldn't tell you what his stat line was. It was amazing. They expect the quarterback to go out there and play defense, too. Sorry, Kyle. We good now, Jared? No. No, I'm just tired of people randomly hating on C.J. Stroud, even when he is damn near perfect well, well let's get to it when we grade them but first jared let, we're going to grade the coaching staff as a whole i'd say the coaching staff as a whole you know originally i put b minus but I'm, I'm actually just going to i'm just going to straight up and just put a c i'm just going to i'm just going to put a straight c for me um just thinking of more and just listening to you 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 talk here the how great on loose curve. <laughs> no, no. I'll see as a whole with all the coaching staff, that's offensive and the defensive coaching. And I thought defensive wise, I thought Ohio state did pretty decent, but as a whole, I think, I think the coaching staff, I see here, but adjustment adjustments needed to happen sooner. I would love to have seen what happened in the later in the third quarter and definitely in the fourth quarter happen in the second quarter, <laughs> but hopefully that's something that they'll, that they'll learn. Listen, we grade on a curve here, right? I'm grading the coaches against themselves. I expect Ryan day to have a great offensive game plan because that's, that's the standard that he has set for himself. I expect that the defense has a great game plan because nine weeks into the season, this is what we expect now from Knowles. Knowles no longer gets graded based off of 2021. We did that all through September. We kept throwing a pluses at him because he was destroying our expectations. Well, guess what? It's almost November. Now we're now grading Knowles against himself. And I don't think he, I, I, this was honestly, I think the worst coaching performance by both of them this year. Um, mm-hmm. I think a C is incredibly generous, Kyle. Um, okay. I'll, I'll get more into why when we jump into the offensive coaching, I think it's a D. All right. And chat here. Uh, D D D minus. So yeah, I think, I think they agree with you there, Jared. So offensive coaching staff, so moving to the offensive side, I, I'd give him a D here. 
Definitely yeah. an F in that. Definitely an F in that first half there. But they made adjustments late, but they did make the adjustments. Did they? <laughs> they did. They, they they made some adjustments. But, I mean, you still score 44 points. Did you hear? I, I think it was C.J. Stroud. Oh, see, Austin's on top of it. He I, he almost beat me to it. Did you hear the C.J. Stroud's comments after the games? Mm -hmm. A lot of those slant patterns that was getting the offense going, a lot of those patterns to Marvin Harrison Jr. that were getting the offense going, they were making those adjustments themselves. I was begging on Twitter, in the Discord, to anyone that would listen to me. I was begging, let CJ be CJ. They kept making him throw these swing passes and these bubble passes and these screen pass. Let him throw down the field. He's a potential first overall NFL quarterback pick. Let him throw the fucking ball. I have never, and I mean never, been this mad at a Ryan Day offense. I've been this mad at a Jim Trestle offense. I've been this mad at a, oh God, I've been so mad at Jim Bowman offenses. I've been this mad at, at Urban Meyer offenses. I have never been this mad at a Ryan Day offense. Give him an F. Give him an F. I, I don't understand. And by the way, F is too generous. I don't think an F minus is a thing, Austin. I've... I've never been this frustrated and this mad at a Ryan Day offense before. I let CJ throw the ball. The The runs weren't working. It took you until the fourth quarter to say, hey, let's try some zone blocking. Oh, you, if you had that in your arsenal, why didn't we see that right away in the third quarter? And yep. again, I already I, I could have reached through the television and just oh, when they threw a bubble screen again in the third quarter. God, like. I think the idea of halftime adjustments is slightly overrated. They can make in-game adjustments. Every. Ryan Day loses a letter grade for every bubble screen thrown after the fourth one, which puts him at an F. It wasn't working. All right. Moving on here, Jerry, because we do need to move on. Uh, the quarterback play. CJ Stroud finished the game 26 for 33, 354 yards and a tutty in this game. I think, uh, I think overall what CJ Stroud did, I was very, very happy with what I've seen from him. Uh, very few bad throws. I mean, there's a couple of bad throws. Like, why, why did you do that? But overall, he didn't lose the game. He, um, he I think ran a little it. bit. What <laughs> to everyone? He, <laughs> he even ran it. Yes, he he even ran it. What what was this stat here? Uh, he, uh, I think he ran it twice. I think it'll yeah. technically say three in the stats because he took a sack. I think it was just the one sack, if I remember. Yeah, um, I give him an A minus. I think over. I think again, expectations from CJ Stroud. Um, the bar set really high, so I think it says I think six a attempts on the stat line. Six rushing attempts on the stat line. Um, the. And I'm seeing two sacks. Right. Be, yeah. Carter. Yeah, I forgot about the Dixon sack. I forgot about the Dixon sack. Um, Carter sack. I, it was the one I was thinking of. All right. Would you yeah. Grade uh, these a, a plus. I, I think he was just improperly utilized this game. Okay. All right, offensive line, Jared. What would you grade the offensive line? I, 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 I thought the tackles played well. Um, I don't think the interior guys, two of them who we've already mentioned by name earlier, um, in particular, 
uh, had their struggles again. Um, it's hard to grade an entire. Yes, Austin. It's yeah, I, I agree, Austin. Um, yeah, Donovan was OK. Um, I, I think that it's hard because the outs, the tackles are playing so well and two of the three interiors had bad games again. So I, you kind of have to average it out and it ends up at like a C plus, maybe just a C. Um, just not getting the running game going was insanely frustrating. Go ahead and put that as a C, Kyle. All right. I, I, I give him a C plus here. I, you, you still pass passing um the passing pass blocking. I cannot I cannot talk tonight, Jared. The pass blocking has been really good. See you, Matt. It's been really good. But to like what uh Austin said, the running blocking is just been two games in a row has just been horrendous here. Things things need to be adjusted here because that game coming up here in a few weeks, that's starting to look a lot more scarier as as much as people um don't want to admit it it's it's looking more scary so yeah i give a yeah. C plus for the offensive line and we didn't ha we haven't really talked about it yet and you know we have the defense uh, coming up the the thing that most surprised me about this game and i mean the most surprised me about this game was the effectiveness of the penn state running game mm -hmm. It's a huge concern. All right, running backs, Jared. What would you give the running backs in this game? Um, it's so it's so hard because the blocking just wasn't there. Williams played well when he was in. Um, Henderson played well in the fourth quarter when they switched to the zone blocking. Um, I don't. It's I, I maybe like a uh, spikes has a B minus that feels about right. Um, They were average. Uh, the running game was average, though. I don't even want to say they were average as much as just like the running game was average. Right. Does that make sense? Um, When the defensive tackles are nearly getting to the handoff before you, what what can you ask of the running backs? I, I give the running backs a, a C plus as well, too. It slipping back there just Trey broke two nice ones. He did break he did break two nice ones. Yeah, he, he did, but a lot of it a lot of it has to do with the offensive line, how they do in the in the play calling too, but yeah, I I I expect more from the from the running back group, just from what we've seen. Yes. Williams went down and it seems like that he he he'll be fine possibly playing next week here but my expectations here I I got to give him a C plus here. All right, wide receivers, Jared. What would you give the wide receivers as a whole? Not just one person, but as a whole of the wide receiver group. Uh it it's hard because Marvin Harrison Jr. deserves an A plus. Um we didn't see a whole lot of Julian Fleming in this game. Um, he did draw a pass interference, which is always nice. Um, but I think did did Fleming have a did Fleming even have a? I don't want to say it unless I know. Yeah, he had a couple receptions. Um, and then Emeka did eventually get a really nice catch towards the end that um, set up Ohio State for a touchdown. Um, but again, like how how bad do we want to knock like Emeka for the fact that most of his receptions were bubble passes and Julian Fleming because most of his receptions were bubble passes and it's not their fault. He dropped a big one that Marv made up for. Uh, 
yeah i'm having trouble remembering that but yeah the marv was the only one getting separation austin says i i know clat said that at one point um i i haven't seen it for myself and clat is sometimes more concerned about pushing a narrative than he is about actually reporting what he is seeing um he'll decide what the storyline is and then go with it even if it's not what he's actively seeing um so i i don't know um but i i think again i think a lot of the issue was a game plan issue not so much a wide receiver issue so i'm going to put most of this on the coaches and i'm going to give marvin harrison jr a ton of credit so i'm going to do like a b plus i think which it might be higher than what the chat makes me want to do it but i, I think the issue was schematic more than it was the wide receivers well i'll probably get a lot of hate from chat here i, I actually give the wide receivers and as a whole based on what one person did and then the re and what everybody else did, I I'd give the wide receiver group an A minus. I, I, I know that, I know that there's, you have the, this really high expectation from the wide receiver group, which yes, yes, you do. You only get one, you only get one touchdown in the game. Yeah. Understand that. But when they need to make the catches, they did. Kyle zero. The touchdown was a tight end. That's true. That Wide receivers true. had zero touchdowns. That is right. You're right. Stover did get that touchdown. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll change mine to a, <laughs> to a B plus as well then. I'll change mine to a B plus. <laughs> yeah, but... It, well, and, but again, it, when we talk about grading based off of expectation, we also have to build into the expectation that this is the best secondary in the country that they just faced. That also has to be built into the expectation. So you take the expectation that again, they're facing the best secondary in the country. Then you add in the fact that this was one of the worst coaching performances I've seen from Ryan day from a offensive standpoint. And I just don't know how much blame I'm reserving for the wide receivers. This is Ohio state though. That's not the point. You will still go up against teams that are very good. They might not be very good at all of the positions, which Penn State isn't. Ohio State has three separate quarterbacks who should start over, over Clifford. Maybe two. Brown, maybe, not, maybe not the freshman. But Ohio State has two quarterbacks that would start. You know what I mean? Like... Ohio State is a deeper team. They don't have nearly the holes, the way like Penn State's offensive line struggled, struggled bad. They have a bunch of key places where they're just not very good and it costs them the game. But that's not the same as saying that they're secondary. These specific four guys are really great. So you can't just be like, we're, we're Ohio State, we should be better. You're not going to be better than every team at every matchup. Mm -hmm. You're just not. But still, 300, you, you put up 350 yards in the air on this uh, secondary. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. No, that's why I, I gave AJ, or that's why AJ, I gave CJ an A. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, tight end. Stover Stover had himself a great game here. Six catches, 78 yards, and a touchdown to go with that. Yeah. Um, I would almost give them an A+. Plus. The, the lack of running game is a, is a thing that we have to include in this. Um mm -hmm. Austin points out, and he's correct, that Stover had a great block on the on the run, one of uh, Trey's big runs. Um, but God, that touchdown. 
and the importance of that touchdown, he was just bowling. Did he break three tackles on the way to that touchdown? Three, maybe four. I, I got a bunch of yeses. Um, and, and then, um, and the same move each time. Yeah. The same move, meaning I, I'm going to run you over. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, right, we, an A, an A. Yeah, we are running a little longer here. So let's let's go through are the we? defensive side a little, a little bit more here. So defensive coaching, uh, I think the defensive coaching, I'd give a B minus with with them. Uh, Jim Norris has done tremendous, tremendous uh, changes for this defense this year. But this was not one of their better games. You, you still let Sean Clifford, Sean Clifford. There were three touchdowns, 371 yards on you. Yes, yes, you you picked him off three times, but still, almost 400 yards of Sean Clifford passing on you. That's not acceptable. That's not acceptable at all. I totally agree. In fact, I think you're being incredibly generous with the B-. minus. Schematically... But but, but Fort caused four turnovers in this game, too. That plays... That plays into my grading as well, too. As as Spike says, yeah, but that was all JT. I when I see those turnovers, it, it put, they, put it put them in put them in that spot to to make the plays. When I see those turnovers, Kyle, I'm seeing great individual efforts more than I'm seeing scheme. I'm seeing JT destroy guys. I'm seeing JT leap much higher than I think even he thought he could leap and make us like I'm seeing great individual efforts that force those turnovers more than I'm seeing a scheme that forced those turnovers. To be fair, the first JT pick was schematic. Oh, yeah. okay. because he dropped into coverage. Uh, Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I'll give you that one. But the pick that he caused. uh, That is actually you know, into the record books goes to, uh, Zachary Harrison. Um, that was just JT and Harrison making a great play. The leap was JT just making a great play. Zachariah Harrison. Okay. Um, I, don't have both ends. Yeah. Don't have picks from both ends on my bingo card. No, especially one of them getting two. The strip sack was another great play. Yeah. It, it was just Harrison or not Harrison. JT just had a, one of the best games that I've ever seen a defensive end have ever. But again, mm-hmm. coaching and scheme could have been better. This is the first time I've seen this defense, the 2022 version of the Ohio State defense, look lost this year. And they looked lost this year, or yeah, this game. A lot, of, a lot of people were comparing um, JT's performance of what uh, Clowney did when he played at South Carolina, how disruptive he was. That, that's how disruptive JT was in this game. It was insane. Mm-hmm. Um, All right, uh, deep, what, what, what are you grading the defensive coach, Jared? Like a C minus. I, I, I don't like how easily Penn State was able to run the ball. And I don't like how often there were wide receivers wide open in the secondary. And again, this was just the first time I've seen Knowles' defense at Ohio State look lost and timid. And yeah, I, yeah, I, I think it was, I think schematically he had a bad game. All right. Moving on here. The defensive end. I think it's more Mike, your stitch knowing the system, but you, but Knowles also knows your stitch. Yeah. You got to look at the other side. Your stitch knows Knowles, but knows also knows your stitch. Yep. Defensive end, Jared. I, I think. The defensive end is the lone A plus A in, plus in my, plus my plus. Here. How much how much room we got in that little cell in the table there, Kyle? Get just max out the pluses. All right. 
I don't think we need to spend any more time because we already talked a lot about JT and his efforts too. But we yeah, it just got a, Zach Harrison and Jack Sawyer also played great games. Like absolutely, yeah. I mean, obviously the star of the day is is JT Tuimo allow obviously, but it just needs to be said that yeah, the other right, guys uh, had great games too. All right, defensive tackles. I, I give the defensive tackles an A minus. I thought they did. I thought they did fine, but there were definitely times that they got pushed back a little bit more than I was hoping to see them, which caused the running backs to be able to get those extra yards. Like it, it seemed like that they couldn't get to the running back in time, or they are able to easily pick up three, four yards there, and it's like it's. It was frustrating at times too, but I think overall, um, I thought I was pretty pleased with the defensive tackles. I I don't honestly I I don't know where that positivity is coming from. Um, I saw the defensive ends go ape I mean, shit. Tyreek Williams. I mean Tyreek Williams. He, he made yeah. some great plays there too. And then one, one later, I was the. And that one that was on a fourth and two and came up big there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but again, that, that seemed to happen later in the game. Earlier in the game, we didn't see that quite as much. Um, they were getting held a lot too, Spike says. Yeah, that, that's just going to happen. It, that's football. It's going to happen. Okay. Um I'm not I'm not I'm not going to trash the defensive tackles, I think. But I do think a minus is a bit generous considering the ease in which Penn State ran. So I'll say like a B. OK. All right. Well, that that's that's what I was grading the the linebackers in in this one here. I'd, I'd grade them a, a B for here. Yeah. Tommy Eichenberg, 15 tackles in this game, 15 tackles, 10 of those solo there. Uh, Steel Chambers ended up having nine tackles in the game as well, too. They they made a lot, they made a lot of plays here, but missed some plays too. Missed some plays, missed some tackles. But I think overall, uh I don't think they were the cause of a lot of the issues that was happening with the defense, though. But I thought I thought the linebackers as a whole played um exceptionally, well, not exceptionally well, but they played pretty well pretty well so i give them a b yeah i think a b plus is they they played great at times they also didn't play great at times uh he literally missed a tackle that would have stopped the penn state touchdown yeah i know he was coming in with a lot of speed he had to hit the guy just right and he did i know it was on fourth down he missed the play i i'm acknowledging that that was not a good play, but that also doesn't negate. We don't grade him based off of his worst play. Yeah. And you also have to acknowledge that the Penn state's dual headed running backs are incredibly talented. I no, it's nothing like Borland. Borland would never have been in the backfield to make a tackle to begin with. And you know, it. He never would have been in position to miss that tackle, and you know it. All right. He tried too moving much, on. but couldn't. Yeah, yeah. All right, moving, yeah. moving moving on to the defensive backs, corners, Jared. I was very, overall, I was very disappointed with the corners here. 371 yards that you allowed Sean Clifford to throw on you. How much of that? How much of that was really on the corners, though? A lot of it was. A lot of it was. Yeah. Now, they're, they're coming to the, the chat's side. I, I I think a lot of the big plays happened over the middle. Um, no, I'm not saying the corners were great, but yeah, exactly. But they weren't bad either. Yeah, I, I think you're being a little harsh, Kyle. Um, no, no, Burke, I'm, I'm, I'm being on it. Like, the, I think you're Penn putting State, the entire Penn State, Penn State. Penn State ran similar uh, bubble screens and they worked well. They couldn't get out of the blocks. They couldn't open. They couldn't make those tackles in open space there. It, it was, it was pathetic. The corners were pathetic in this game. I gave them a D plus. I give them I, a D plus here. This was, this was 
this was a really bad I, effort from these. I corners. think you're blaming the corners for some of the failures of the safeties. No, I, I'm, I'm not. You go rewatch, rewatch the game there and tell me how many missed tackles out in open space that when Sean Clifford just threw it to Washington or he threw it to um, Keandre there, it made, they made, they could not tackle worse shit. They could not tackle worse shit. D plus, and I'm being generous. I think, I think a lot of what you saw, if you go back and watch, I think a lot of what you saw was the was the safeties. I, yeah, I the, think the, I think you're seeing really a really bad game passing wise, pass defense wise. And I think you're putting that on the corners when I think more of that should have been on the safeties. I think more of your anger should I think your anger should be spread more evenly over the cornerbacks and the safeties as opposed to scapegoating the cornerbacks. Yeah, I thought the Burke had, I thought well Burke either. had a really good game. Um, the other side of the field, I think they're still trying to find like their guy with Brown not playing, um, but they'll figure that out. Um, yeah, I think McAllister had uh, not a great game. Um, Ransom. I, who has been great this year. Ransom's been great this year. He had a couple bad misses in this game. Um, we're, we're talking about the corners first. We'll get to the safeties here, but let's, let's, let's stick with the corners here though. Cause it, cause you're, you're, you're trying to divert a lot of it to the, to the I safeties am. Here, though. I am because I think that's the fair assessment here. I think that the entire secondary was below average, below where they should be. Okay, so what would you what would you grade the corners then? Like a C plus. And I'm gonna give the same thing to the safeties, maybe just a C to the safeties, maybe not the plus. Yeah, yeah I, I give the safeties a C. I give them a C. Uh definitely some bad angles, uh, just reading the plays too late. I mean, you saw the what was it, that second touchdown in the second quarter there? Just bad angle, bad uh just overall just reading the play and a easy touchdown for Penn State in that in that second in that second quarter there yeah, yeah uh, I, I, uh, give, uh, I give the safeties a C Austin's on my side he he thinks you're diverting too much of the blame to the corners as opposed to the safeties um as, as I think maybe spikes no, is I, I, I get I, I got really I got really disappointed you see how many times Ohio State tried to do the bubble screens and it failed and that's because the the Penn State they, corners made plays. They they you, have more physical you reverse, you corners. Reverse that, and Penn State does does that. And our corners yeah. cannot get off the blocks. They cannot our, make the tackles there. Our corners are a little bit more finesse cover corners. Their corners are a little more physical corners. Um, that's a recruiting difference as much as it is anything else. Yeah, they have better corners. Doesn't mean ours played terribly. Yeah, I I, I agree with that too, Austin. Uh, they have the best. They have the best corners in the country. They have the best secondary in the country. Their secondary seventy one yards. Yeah, but you're. That's on the entire defense, not just the corners. Corners are only two of the guys on the field. A lot, a lot of the situations where you saw guys running open they were running open in the middle of the field which would be on the safeties more often than not all right in the last position here special teams i, I give special teams an a minus they did really well um you did have uh ruggles miss that extra or an extra point miss that one field goal there but Overall, I thought special teams did did really well. A minus. Yeah, um, Mirko had a couple nice punts as well. Um, he averaged fifty two yards a punt. Um, the missed field goal was bad. It was from pretty far out, but you're right; it wasn't even close. Like, yeah. He was on the right hash and the ball just went straight. 
like mm-hmm. may, maybe even veered right a little bit like it was it was never had a chance uh yeah the punt coverage and the kickoff coverage i thought was was good as well no kickoffs out of bounds for ohio state this game but to win yeah penn state did though um Oh, uh, can you touch on the end of the second half? We missed that and deserved to be touched on. Oh, the I don't. Yeah, there was some bad clock management at the uh, end of the first half, for sure. The no points coaching. I mean, I, I, I took at the end of that first half there that Ryan Day was trying to make a statement to his guys and say, hey, you guys are playing terrible. We we got us. We got to get uh, we got to get a touchdown here before before the end of the half, get some momentum back here, get some confidence back and it backfired. Yeah. You only had a couple seconds left on the scoreboard. To me, you had Marvin single coverage. Just toss it up there. It's only going to take a few seconds. Toss it up to Marv in single coverage. And if you're not giving CJ the freedom to make that call at the line of scrimmage, then give him that freedom. If you're not giving, and apparently he did because we did hear later that they were sort of making some their, their own routes. They were doing hot routes on the field. I'm just saying you need to give CJ the freedom in that position just to be like, toss it in the corner to Marv. Mm -hmm. You got him one-on-one, you throw it high into the end zone. He's either going to catch it or it's going to go out of bounds. And regardless, it's not going to take much time off the clock, which leaves you the opportunity for the field goal. Mm -hmm. All right, he's Jared, yeah. For- he's your junior All American Heisman candidate quarterback. Give him the reins. Yeah, he's technically a redshirt sophomore, right. but I agree. All right, time to time to get on our Buckeye leaves here, Jared. All right, Off- offense. Well, I th- I think the obvious for offense and defense, Jared. <laughs> the defense is painfully obvious. Um, I think you could easily give it to. Uh, I think there's two good options on the offense. Which one are you taking? I'll take the other one. I'll take uh. Mr. Marvin Harrison Jr. So I'll take CJ Stroud. Um, right. it, it feels obvious. All right. And defense, it's JTT. You're dumb if you uh, don't say it. It's just like sometimes I'll sometimes I'll be like, oh, Kyle took oh, that player. JTT, I'll take someone uh, else. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, we don't do JTT anymore. He doesn't like that. Um but yeah, it's it's it's, it's Normally, Kyle, if Kyle takes the guy I want, I'll pick someone else. But no, it would it would be it would be dumb to pick anyone other than uh, JT in this situation. And the wild card, you know, I'll, I'll give it to I'll give it to our our slip cat's favorite position here. Uh, give it to Cade Stover here. He had himself a great game, as I mentioned before, six catches, 78 yards and the lone reception touchdown for the team. <laughs> you give it to Rossi. Rossi with the uh, best average per carry on the team out of anybody in this game. Yeah, uh, I could go a bunch of different places for my wild card spot. Um, I'm gonna give it the. I think I'll give it the. I one. I was. I'm. I'm. I'm struggling because I was gonna give it to Cade Stover and. I think this time I'm going to try and not do the same thing as Kyle. So I'll go somewhere else and go Zach Harrison. Okay. I'll go Zach Harrison. I think, I think, I think another, I think another one you could have said maybe no Ruggles. No maybe. Ruggles there. Maybe I could have. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, we're, I'm, let me find a couple of questions and we will call it an episode here, Jared. Okay. Um, all right, Buckeye Esquire, should we make gap running scheme the default going forward? I don't know about default, but it needs to be, it needs to be in the game plan. Uh, no, zone if Trey is the running back. 
I wonder how practical that is to constantly switch back and forth between the two of them. All right, Nomad wants to know what frustrated you the most from yes from Saturday's game. Bubbles gave you what gave you the most confidence. Most confidence, uh, our defensive ends gave me the most yeah, confidence. The, the, uh, uh, what pissed JT, me off the most, the bubbles. J yeah, JT coming not not really coming out of his shell because we mentioned we've mentioned it before. The stats don't do justice to what JT's done. Agreed. so far this year and finally the stats came to him here yeah <laughs> yeah all right uh let's see here let's let's pick one from stewart um is it me or did we have issues getting pushed from both lines yeah no that's <laughs> accurate well yeah again maybe one of the reasons why i was harder on the defensive tackles than kyle um, I, I don't think we are getting good push from the defensive line and we've already talked about our issues with the, with the interior of the offensive line. So no, Stuart, not just you. And if there's a follow-up to that, that asks, and does that concern you about the Michigan game? Yes. All right. And that's kind of leading into Austin's question here. Uh, we are on a collision course to, with, T ton at this point. What are the strengths and weaknesses that Ohio State can use or try to plan against moving forward in order to prepare for that game on Thanksgiving weekend? Um, you need to further explore your zone blocking, especially if you know when Trey's in the game it was obviously a huge boost for him. And you're going to need to just f figure it out as far I if they need to make changes along the offensive line then that's a thing they need to figure out um I don't know if they are there yet and I don't know you know maybe Vamahi gets a look I I don't know um But yeah, how, how do you fix it? I think you need to identify. I wonder, uh, I'll, I'll just ask this question. We saw Ohio State do more of a traditional 4-3 defense when they played Iowa. I kind of wish they had done the same against Penn State, and I kind of hope that they do that against Michigan as well. Um. I would have I would have loved for this to have been another Cody Seinman and Steel Chambers and Tommy Eichenberg game. Mm -hmm. Hard to do when your corners aren't playing well. Did did we not just literally talk about how they actually did play well, Austin? Did we not seriously just have that conversation? I agree. Were, with you, were you not agreeing with me? No, he was agreeing with me, Kyle. He was agreeing with me. No, I meant coming into the game. Uh, that's, that's fair. That's fair. Cause yeah, they, they've not played well all season, although they are improving. All right, Jared, that is, that is, uh, all the questions. And that is our Scarlet and grade episode. Uh, you got anything else before we wrap it up? Oh, uh, no, we're going to have to, I'm going to have to, uh, move quickly as I can't think of what I'm saying. Um, come visit our uh, Discord server. Discord server is free. Everyone can join it. It's uh, a great time on a Saturday. Um, we watch the evening games for our social screen Saturday night. Um, evening games didn't really end up turning into much, unfortunately, but um, sometimes, you, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Uh, and you can find that at discord.thesloopcast.com. And don't forget, patreon.thesloopcast.com. We're trying to get those numbers up a bit. So if you could... Um, it was less fun without the cutest host. <laughs> Kyle was there for most of it. Um, oh, yeah. Austin saying it was him. 
yeah so come come join come join our discord server and if you want premium access within the discord server which by the way most of it's free but there is a premium section and premium rights in the discord server and that seriously costs you three dollars a month that is three dollars a month that's it um you can pay for 12 months up front uh, and it's even cheaper. You get it like a 12% or something discount if you do all 12 months up front. And on top of that, on top of that, um, you also get early access to episodes. You get your own RSS feed that you can pop into your uh, into your podcast app. And not only do those come out sooner, uh, they also don't have those annoying pre-recorded ads that play during the audio version of the podcast. And that being said, there is an audio only version of the podcast. If you're not aware, and there is a YouTube version of the podcast. If you're on the other side of that and may not be aware, um, you can find the podcast version on whatever podcast app you choose. And, uh, you can find us on YouTube, both on the Buckeye huddle YouTube page and our own YouTube page. You can just search Sloopcast while in your YouTube app and you will find us. All right. Um, this week we will be watching. Austin's just planning the social screen. Pitt slash Q's, Georgia slash Tennessee, Penn State slash Indiana, Michigan State slash Illinois. Austin's just planning it for me, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I, you know, there's the BAM LSU game too, right? Listen, the people will vote. We'll figure it out. All right, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, nope. Other than early, early favorites by Ohio State over Northwestern, thirty-six points. Mm. Take the over. <laughs> You do that just to piss me off. I know you do. I did. I did. That's short and sweet. Short and sweet, Jared. Okay. All right. Um, also, Pittsburgh lost. Thanks, Austin. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Um, who should we play for music tonight? Seriously having trouble finding Bumblebees. someone. As of when this is released, what about it? Tuesday. No, this is the Monday. The rankings. Oh, I don't I don't care. We'll figure that out. Come out tomorrow. I, I, I don't care. Like, we'll probably watch it because it's like right before our... By the way, also with your Patreon money comes an exclusive third or third fifth episode of the week called sloop cats only so we'll probably watch it together even though it doesn't matter it, it is a shit show you're, you're correct about that no no no. it's a shit show no no you're doing you're doing it the other way around gangland all right that's it that's the end of the episode tonight's uh ending music will be brought to you by a singer songwriter out of the cincinnati area no, Kabuto, it's literally my thing. You can't tell me I'm wrong. I made it up. Uh, Lincoln, uh, singer-songwriter, goes by the name Lincoln out of Cincinnati. So with all that being said, no, you're gangland. Uh, <laughs> with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Lincoln. <laughs>